Hey guys, I'm going to try to install my own heat pump. This should make for an interesting video. The brand I'm installing is one of the most popular for DIYers, Senville, and I'm installing the 9000 BTU unit. I believe in it comes in a 240 volt or 120 volt model. I have the 120 volt model, but most of the installation steps will be similar except for the mains wiring. Something to note is if you install this yourself, the warranty is not valid unless you get a certified HVAC tech to release the refrigerant. Depending on where you're located, check your building codes before proceeding with your installation and when in doubt, get a qualified electrician and HVAC specialist to do the install. So I made a little template here of the heat pump so I can mount it, so I can kind of figure out where to mount this without holding up the pump. I know that I should have more room up here at the top, but unfortunately, just the way the ceiling in this bedroom is so low, uh, I'm kind of limited. So it's not gonna work at uh, optimal efficiency. So on the rear of the head unit, we have our supply lines or our refrigerant lines under this. And then this is the drain tube. And what we're gonna do is I have a hole drilled in the wall so I can access it directly. I can poke it through right here. You can go out through the right side or the left side by taking out these knockout panels here on the sides here. But I'm not gonna bother. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna straighten out these pipes. I'm going to wrap it. I'm also going to wrap and include the electrical through that way. So I'm going to straighten these out. So you can see here, they're just the copper lines. You want to do this so that you're not putting too much stress on the copper lines. Okay, I'm wiring this up and one thing to note is the wiring color does not match on the heat pump unit, on the outside unit to the head unit here. So it's just important just to know that the numbers one, two, and three correspond to the numbers on the heat pump. Basically they have a blue wire on the heat pump unit and they have a white wire here. This here is the 25 feet copper line set. One is a high pressure line and the other is a low pressure line. I believe the stock line set is 16 feet. 
It comes pre-flared and ready to be installed. Just remember if you order a longer line set than 25 feet, you will need to have additional R410A refrigerant added by an HVAC tech. The pre-installed refrigerant is for only up to 25 feet. And if you have a really short run and have to cut the lines, you might need to have refrigerant removed. Here, I'm just sealing the hole with the included clay. What's nice about this stuff is if you ever need to remove it, it's a lot easier than caulking or spray foam. What I'm installing here is a custom flange. I have a really weird roof line, so I couldn't use the one that came with the line set cover. Here I'm removing the ceiling caps to the head unit. That hissing sound is the nitrogen to keep the system sealed, it's not the refrigerant. Next here, I apply Nylog fitting sealant. It's not necessary, but all the reviews I read says it's really good stuff. I apply it to the flare fittings and also to the flange. It helps seal and lubricate. I hand tighten the flare nuts, making sure to align the flare and flange nice and evenly before tightening. I didn't show this part, but I ran the lines down to the main compressor unit that is concealed under the line set cover, which you also have to purchase separately. I made a hole and redirected the drain tube for when the unit is running in AC mode. So in the summer, I can collect the water and use it to water plants. I installed the outside compressor unit on a solid pad following the clearance guidelines and raised the heat pump up a few inches. This leaves room for the drain plug and hose that is on the bottom of the unit. I don't need to worry about snow building up under the unit, but if it's an issue for you, get a stand for the unit. I also make sure that I don't have any low spots in the copper lines. I think refrigerant can condense or collect in those low spots and can end up giving you problems. Here I am again applying some nylog to the fittings. If you need to shorten the lines, you'll need a flaring kit to cut and reflare the copper lines. I was lucky and I had the right length. When tightening down the flare fittings, I use two wrenches, one to secure the valve and one on the fitting. This is to prevent applying too much torquing stress on the valve. I'm using these liquid tight connections with flexible conduit to protect the wiring. For the signal wire, I match the connections to the same wires and numbers as the inside head unit. Wire the unit to the mains power and you'll also need to install a disconnect switch like this one. Here I've hooked up the vacuum pumping gauges to the low side of the compressor. I open the low side valve and then turn on the pump to pull a vacuum for at least 30 minutes. You can see here on the blue low side gauge, it's pulling a nice vacuum.
I'll pause here so you can see all the connections. The blue low side hose from the gauge set is connected to the low side of the compressor unit. Also, you might need an adapter for the R410A connection. The yellow hose is connected to the vacuum pump port and connected to the middle port of the gauge set. Now let's wait half an hour. A note about using a vacuum pump and AC HVAC gauges. You might notice that the connections on the fittings seem loose. Never use pliers to tighten down the fittings. They only need to be snug and hand tightened. The reason is once you turn on the vacuum pump and start pulling a vacuum, the suction holds them firmly in place. Also, I got my pumping gauges just off of Amazon they're of like mediocre quality, but good enough for the DIYer. All right, I left this go for an hour and there's no change in pressure. It hasn't moved. So we know that the system is holding vacuum. There's no leaks, at least not immediate leaks. Now it's time to open the high pressure side, let a little in, see if there's any leaks, and then I can fully release all of the refrigerant. Okay, it says to turn a quarter of a turn and let it go for five seconds to let some of the refrigerant in. Okay, that's five seconds. Oh, and we got an increase in pressure on this side, on the low side. And now it says to let it sit for a few minutes to make sure there's no change. Then I can fully release all of the refrigerant. All right, no change in pressure at all. That's great. Let's disconnect everything and then crack open the hex valves to let the refrigerant in. All right, the moment of truth. Also, I didn't show it, but use some soapy water to test for leaks on the flare fittings after releasing the refrigerant. Then wrap the lines with the included vinyl wrap. All right, here's a test of the heat pump. It's 22 degrees Celsius in the ambient air. As you can see here, we're climbing. We're 30, 36 degrees, 37 degrees Celsius. 
38 degrees Celsius. Next, let's go check the outdoor unit. So we're at topped out at 40 degrees Celsius. As you can see here, the ambient air temperature is minus six degrees Celsius. You can see snow on the ground. Okay, so now I'm going to put the thermometer in front of the heat pump and let's see what kind of reading we get. And then I move it out of the stream of air and now it's starting to climb back up. There. Now it's climbing back up to probably minus six. So a three degrees difference. Let's try this one more time. Minus six. And about minus nine in front of the heat pump. Well, that's it. A few things though to keep in mind is the warranty is not valid unless you get it signed off by an HVAC tech. Make sure to check for leaks and you'll need a vacuum pump and gauges to pump down the refrigeration lines before releasing the refrigerant or else your heat pump's life will be greatly reduced. Follow and read the instructions carefully and when in doubt, get a professional to do the install. Well, I hope you found this video insightful and I'll see you guys in the next one.